Chapter 13 All too soon, Stanley was back out on the lake, sticking his shovel into the dirt. X-ray was right. The third hole was the hardest. So was the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the... He dug his shovel into the dirt. After a while, he had lost track of the day of the week and how many holes he had dug. It all seemed to be like one big hole, and it would take a year and a half to dig it. He guessed he had lost at least five pounds. He figured that in a year and a half, he'd be either in great physical condition or else dead. He dug his shovel into the dirt. It couldn't always be this hot, he thought. Surely it got cooler in December. Maybe then they froze. He dug his shovel into the dirt. His skin, his skin had gotten tougher. He didn't hurt so much, it didn't hurt so much to hold the shovel. As he drank from the canteen, he looked up at the sky. A cloud had appeared earlier in the day. It was the first cloud he could remember seeing since coming to Camp Green Lake. He and the other boys had been watching it all day, hoping it would move in front of the sun. Occasionally it got close, but it was just teasing them. His hole was waist deep. He dug his shovel into the dirt. As he dumped it out, he thought he saw something glisten as it fell onto the dirt pile. Whatever it was, it was quickly buried. buried. Stanley stared at the pile for, at a moment. Stanley stared at the pile a moment, unsure if he had seen it. Even if it was something, what good would it do him? He'd promised to give anything he found to X-ray. It didn't seem worth the effort to climb out of his hole to check it. He glanced up at the cloud, which was close enough to the sun that he had to squint to look at it. He dug his shovel back into the earth, scooped out some dirt, and lifted it over his dirt pile. But instead of dumping it there, he tossed it off to the side. His curiosity had gotten the better of them, him. He climbed out of his hole and siphoned his fingers through the pile. He felt something hard and metallic. He pulled it out. It was a golden tube. And as long and as wide as the second finger on his right hand, the tube was open at one end closed at the other. He used a few drops of his precious water to clean it. There se seemed to be some kind of design on the flat close end. He poured a few more drops of water on it and rubbed it on the inside of his pants pocket. He looked again at the design engraved into the flat bottom of the tube. He could see an outline of a heart with the letters KB etched inside it. He tried to figure out some way that he wouldn't have to give it to X-Ray. He could just keep it, but that wouldn't do him any good. He wanted a day off. He looked at the large piles of dirt near X-Ray. Uh, he looked at the large piles of dirt near where X-Ray was digging. X-Ray was probably almost finished for the day. Getting the rest of the day would hardly do him much good. X-Ray would first have to show the tube to Mr. Sir or Mr. Pendinsky who would then have to show it to the warden. By then, X-ray might be done anyway. Stanley wondered about trying to secretly take the tube directly to the warden. He could explain the situation to the warden, and the warden might make up an excuse for him getting the day off, so X-ray wouldn't suspect. He looked across the lake towards the cabin under the two, uh, under the two oak trees. The place scared him. He had been at Camp Green Lake almost two weeks and he still hadn't seen the warden. That was just as well. If he could go the entire year and a half without seeing the warden, that would be fine with him. Besides, he didn't know if the warden would, would find the tube interesting. <clears throat> he looked at it again. It looked familiar. He thought he had seen it. He'd seen something like it somewhere before, but couldn't quite place it. What you got there, caveman? Asked Zigzag. Stanley's large hand closed around the tube. Nothing, uh, just a, uh, uh, it was useless. I think I might have found something. Another fossil? No, I'm not sure what it is. 
Let me see, said Zigzag. Instead of showing it to Zigzag, Stanley brought it to X-Ray. Zigzag followed. X-Ray looked at the tube, then rubbed his dirty glasses on his dirty shirt and looked at the tube again. One by one, the other boys dropped their shovels and came to look. It looks like an old shotgun shell, said Squid. Yeah, that's probably what it is, said Stanley. He decided not to mention the engraved design. Maybe nobody would notice. He doubted X-Ray could see it. No, it's too long to be a shotgun shell, said Magnet. It'll, it's probably just a piece of junk, said Stanley. Well, I'll show it to Mom, said X-Ray. See what he thinks. Who knows? Maybe I'll get the day off. Your hole's almost finished, said Stanley. Yeah, so? Stanley raised and lowered his shoulder. So why don't you wait till tomorrow to show it to Mom? He suggested. You can pretend you found it first thing in the morning. Then you can get the whole day off instead of just an hour or so this afternoon. X-Ray smiled. Good thinking, caveman. He dropped the tube into his large pocket on the right leg of his dirty orange pants. Stanley returned to his hole. When the water truck came, Stanley started to take his place at the end of the line. But X-Ray told him to get behind Magnet in front of Zero. Stanley moved up one place in line. Chapter 14 That night, as Stanley lay on his scratchy and smelly cot, he tried to figure out what he could have done differently. But there was nothing he could do, for once in his unlucky life, he was in the right place at the right time, and it still didn't help him. You got it? he asked X-Ray the next morning at breakfast. X-Ray looked at him with half-open eyes behind his dirty glasses. I don't know what you're talking about, he grumbled. You know, said Stanley. No, I don't know, X-Ray snapped. So just leave me alone, okay? I don't want to talk to you. Stanley didn't say another word. Mr. Sir marched the boys out to the lake chewing sunflower seeds along the way and spitting out the shells. He scrapped the ground with his boot hill to mark everywhere each boy was supposed to dig. Stanley stamped down the pack uh, on the back of the blade of the shovel, piercing the hard, dry earth. He couldn't figure out why X-ray snapped at him. If he doesn't, if he wasn't going to produce the tube, why didn't he? Why did he make Stanley give it to him? Was he just going to keep it? The tube was gold in color, but Stanley didn't think it was real gold. The water truck came a little after sunrise. Stanley finished his last drop of water and stepped up out of his hole. At this time of the day, Stanley sometimes could see some distant hills or mountains on the other side of the lake. They were only visible for a short while and would soon disappear behind the haze of heat and dirt. The truck stopped and the dust cloud drifted past it. X-ray took his place at the front of the line. Mr. Pandinsky filled his canteen. Thanks, Mom, X-Ray said. He didn't mention the tube. Mr. Pandinsky filled all, the, filled all the canteens, then climbed back into the cab of the pickup. He still had to bring water to Group E. Stanley could see them digging about 200, mile, 200 yards away. Mr. Pandinsky, X-Ray shouted from his hole. Wait, wait, Mr. Pandinsky, I think I might have found something. The boys all followed Mr. Pandinsky as he walked over to X-Ray's hole. Stanley could see the gold tube sticking out of some dirt on the end of X-Ray's shovel. Mr. Pandinsky examined it and took a long look at its flat bottom. I think the warden is going to like this. Does X-Ray get the day off? asked Squid. Just keep digging until someone says otherwise, Mr. Pandinsky said. Then he smiled. But if I were you, Rex. I wouldn't dig too hard. Stanley watched the cloud of dust move across the lake to the cabin beneath the trees. The boys in Group E were just going to have to wait. It didn't take long for the pickup to return. Mr. Pendency stepped out of the cab. A tall woman with red hair stepped out of the passenger side. She looked even taller than she was. Since Stanley was down in his hole... She wore a black cowboy hat and black cowboy boots, which were studded with turquoise stones. 
The sleeves on her shirt were rolled up and her arms were covered with freckles, as was her face. She walked right up to X-Ray. This is where you found it? Yes, ma'am. Your good work will be rewarded, she turned to Mr. Pandinsky. Drive X-Ray back to camp. Let, let him take a double shower and give him some clean clothes. But first, I want you to fill everyone's canteen. I just filled them a little while ago, said Mr. Pandinsky. The warden stared hard at him. Excuse me, she said. Her voice was soft. I had just filled them when Rex... Excuse me, the warden said again. Did I ask you when you last filled them? No, but it's just excuse me. Mr. Pendinsky stopped talking. The warden wiggled her finger for him to come to her. It's hot, and it's only getting hot, going to get hotter, she said. Now, these fine boys have been working hard. Don't you think it might be possible that they might have taken a drink since you last filled their canteens? Mr. Pandinsky said nothing. The warden turned to Stanley. Caveman, will you come here, please? Stanley was surprised she knew his name. He had never seen her until she stepped out of the truck. He didn't know the warden was a woman. He nervously went towards her. Mr. Pandinsky and I have been having a discussion. Have you taken a drink since Mr. Pandinsky last filled your canteen? Stanley didn't want to cause any trouble for Mr. Pandinsky. Uh, I still got plenty left, he said. Excuse me. He stopped. Yeah, I, I drank some. Thank you. May I see your canteen, please? Stanley handed it to her. Her fingernails were painted dark red. She gently shook the canteen, letting the water swish inside the plastic container. Do you hear the empty spaces? She asked. Yes, said Mr. Pandinsky. Then fill it, she said. And the next time I tell you to do something, I expect you to do it without questioning my authority. If it's too much trouble for you to fill a canteen, I'll give you a shovel. You can dig the hole and the caveman can fill your canteen. She turned back to Stanley. I don't think that would be too much trouble for you, would it? No, said Stanley. So what will it be? She asked Mr. Pandinsky. Do you want to fill the canteens or do you want to dig? I'll fill the canteens said Mr. Pandinsky. Thank you.